Okay, so <coughs> last time we saw two versions of Internet filtering algorithms and uh, uh, we started the third one, uh, but um, I made a few mistakes that actually you detected uh, um, uh, just in, I got messed up indices, so, so we will uh, go carefully over this part. But let's just remember um, what the idea is. Uh, the idea is to have a running estimate, uh, say this will be some iteration P uh, of uh, the uh, of the uh, which will be a vector of the true values, right? Or uh, approximations. So approximation of true values, right? Um, and the idea was so we have sensors, right? Say sensor S one. S2 up to Sn, and uh, they make uh, measurements, say, over time, and we denote by M, um, what did we use for the, I think it was J, I is the measurement, of sensor, J at uh, instant I, right? And the idea is uh, to <coughs> find simultaneously uh, they, what they are measuring some true value, let's call it uh, um, V of I, uh, so that would be true uh, value at uh, instant i, right? So the idea is to iteratively provide better and better approximation, better and better estimates of the true values and um, <coughs> estimate of uh, reliability, so to speak, on, of the sensor measured uh, in uh, uh, in some cases by variance, but in general uh, the reliability will be measured by how far the, uh, the measurements of Jade sensor uh, differ from the present estimate of the true value. So how do we measure uh, how, how close a sensor is, well, this is, we simply take a uh, least distance of a, of a sensor J, uh, and I guess we can say here it's at uh, iteration uh, P to be simply uh, the square Euclidean distance sum uh, when K goes uh, between 1 and i of m j k minus the estimate uh, uh, that was obtained in the previous stage of iteration. So p minus 1 of the value uh, at uh, instant k and then squared. So this is simply square of the Euclidean distance between measurements of the jade sensor and the current estimate uh, of the value being measured at instant k. So the two algorithms differ by how we turn this distance into a weight assigned to the sensor. So in the first 
the reciprocal uh, that was uh, introduced by Loretti, I think it's spelled is uh, the weight given to sensor uh, J at the stage of iteration P is uh, simply equal 1 over this of sensor J at um, right at, uh, I guess this would be um, at what stage? P minus one stage of iteration, right? So just the reciprocal, and then this uh, we get weight to be of uh, given to sensor J is just W of J uh, divided by uh, sum of all Ws. Uh, Right to so that they sum up to one, huh? and we saw the problem here with such a weight is that uh, uh, this function has a pole at zero. So if uh, during the iteration, um, so what is then the new estimate? So then the new estimate p plus one. It's just the weighted average of weight of j times m j i. Right, so because this function has a pole, if you, during the iteration, if you ever get close to the measurements of one of the sensors, it will get all the weight it will have get it will get weight one and everyone else gets uh, almost zero weight. Uh, so even though it performs well with the randomly chosen variances of the sensors, uh, it actually, as we will see a bit later, it's also vulnerable to attack, collusion attack. Now the second one was affine. Uh, Uh, and it was introduced by the, the Gerchow. I think it's spelled like this. And the WJ, now notice in this case, uh, each sensor gets the same weight regardless of what instant uh, it's doing measurement, so the weight depends only on the sensor, not at the instant. So now here we actually, the weight depends both on the sensor and instant when it's measured because it is equal to max uh, when k ranges between one and number of sensors, n of distance ki minus, so this max, minus uh, distance um, of sensor j at instant i. So here, the new estimate, uh, so s, and then of course we normalize the weight um, by having weight j i is equal w j i divided by sum of w k i. Alex. Right Alex. Yes. Can you move the board up a little bit so yes. the computer doesn't block the? Okay. Thank you. Right, so here we, uh, so the formula looks a little bit different. In this case, S, uh, estimate, how do I write it? S, 
of that instant i is equal to the sum of weight j i times measurement of j i, <coughs> right? Because here, uh, this is the sum over j, because here the weight depends both on the sensor and at the instant where measurements is made because of this um, quantity that is, of course, dependent on i. And we saw that the problem with this is, that of course, this function has no singularities, no poles. So it's numerically robust. But if you have a large outlier, an outlier that has large error, then this will be very large. And <coughs> true sensors will be, I mean, good sensors will have much smaller distance than this. So all the sensors tend to get the same weight that is approximately equal to this max, because little is being subtracted. So <coughs> this also is not uh, a very good uh, estimate. So if we can move to this board. So now um, the, an alternative that uh, my students uh, proposed was the following. Remember, the idea, idea is uh, that uh, when you have measurements of sensors, uh, rather than looking how close they are to the running estimate of the, uh, of the true value, what we can do is we can, quote unquote, ask each sensor how likely the measurement of a particular sensor, say K or J, how likely the measurement of J sensor is. Uh, now, assuming <coughs> that the sensors have Gaussian distribution, then the likelihood uh, from the, uh, let's write it like this, likelihood from the point of uh, uh, view of uh, sensor K about measurements of sensor J. So this is likelihood. of uh, measurements of uh, sensor uh, J to be correct from the point of view of sensor K. So assuming Gaussian distribution, then L. Now, we will be, of course, again, trying uh, to, see, uh, to simultaneously estimate the variances of the sensors in order to use approximate maximum likelihood estimation and the true value. So the likelihood kj will be then equal 1 over, so what is happening here? Here sensor k assumes that he is the right guy. And he looks, what is the likelihood, if I am right, what is the likelihood that the jade sensor, uh, to, to produce uh, such measurements uh, that the jade sensor uh, has produced? So. Well, this likelihood will be square root 2 pi times variance of sensor k, because we are asking uh, about likelihood from the perspective of the k sensor. 
not from the perspective of J-sensor. We are asking K-sensor, how likely are the measurements of the J-sensor? So according to him, this will be then E to the minus, and then here will be, and let's put also variable I at instant K. Yeah? A point of view of sensor chi at uh, instant i. So this will be measurement of uh, sensor j at instant i minus measurement of sensor k at instant i, and then squared, and then divided by two times variance k, right? So this sensor, uh, sensor k assumes he is right. So he thinks of his measurement as the true measurement, as the true value, and then he looks how likely is uh, this measurement? How likely would I be to produce such a value? Well, that will be according to the Gaussian distribution, it will be precisely that. And then what is the likelihood over all instance i, right? Then let's call this L hat of kj is simply the product of, uh, let's write this as 2 pi vk uh, to, this will be to t over 2 if t is total number. Uh, so let me move this outside. Right, if I, when I multiply all of these, this will be, there are uh, <coughs> instants, there are this many instants, and then I have product of these uh, times product of e to the minus, and then this divided by 2vk, which is of course equal 2 pi vk to the power t over 2 times e to the minus, and here I'll have sum of uh, measurement of j sensor over instance uh, I minus measurement of uh, k sensor at instant i squared divided by 2 vk, right? Uh, and uh, uh, then what is, uh, let's call it now L tilde, of likely, uh, likelihood of uh, uh, sensor J, what is the likelihood of all measurements of sensor J, uh, right? Well, this will be simply the product of L K J because the errors of the sensors are independent, right? So this will be L K J over all possible K going from one to N. And this is, of course, equal to the product of uh, uh, 2 pi vk to t over 2 times e to the minus, and then here sum of m j i minus m k i, and then squared divided by, so this is product over k, divided by vk. Yeah? So that's, and now we define, we give weight to each sensor according to the likelihood of its measurements from the perspective of all, this kind of cumulative perspective of all sensors. So then new s, Right, uh, will be, let me make sure that I 
didn't forget the the formula. So that's uh, this. Um, bum bum. And then the yeah that these are the weights. So estimate is then new estimate is this sum when uh, of the uh, L tilde J divided by sum of all L tilde J's times measurement of J I. And then we can now compute, so that will be the estimate for i, say, at iteration on p. And then we can compute new version of the variance for sensor vj in the usual way. Namely, it is simply uh, 1 over t, uh, and then uh, sum overall i uh, measurement of sense of j at instant uh, i minus s uh, p of i and then squared. Finally, when this finishes, uh, we use uh, this, uh, the purpose is not to get s the purpose is just to get a robust estimation of variances uh, to avoid the problem of the reciprocal weight uh, that the variance of one sensor, sensor estimate of the variance of one sensor converge to zero. This, appear, this is robust and no, and then finally you get final estimate uh, will be sum 1 over v j over sum 1 over v k m uh, j i right after after the the process has stopped you discard the running estimates which were just used to estimate uh, the variances and you just apply the maximum likelihood uh, estimation. So, <coughs> so, um, so the idea is, what is the idea? The idea is to kind of decentralize uh, decision, right? We assign weights not according to the estimates of the variances because of this singularity, but we assign weights according to the likelihood that, uh, uh, according to the likelihood of the measurements of a sensor from the perspective of all other uh, sensors. Now, this is, so to speak, heuristics behind it. But why does this really work better? Uh, because notice that in the likelihoods, uh, we still have <coughs> this reciprocal. But the trick now is, uh, if Vk goes to zero, this does not go to infinity, it actually goes to zero. And the reason for that is, uh, if you, oh, should I thought I had it here. Okay, let's just do it on the spot. Uh, let us plot, uh, let us plot, uh, 1 over, and um, let me uh, exit the, okay, let me see it how it's, basic math, 
input. So we want to plot the reciprocal of 1 over square root uh, of 2 pi uh, 2 pi times variance v and then here we will have e oops e to the power and then minus and then quotient say the these distances <coughs> between the measurements of i and j sensor let's just put any number say uh, point three, point three, and then let's divide by two uh, v, right? And uh, let's plot this between. So this will be for v going from zero to I don't know twenty, say. So let's see how uh, this function behaves. Uh, and you have to tell Mathematica what range all. And lo and behold, uh, look what the curve looks like. As variance goes towards zero, it starts shooting up, but then when it gets really very close to the zero, it goes to zero. So it avoids singularity at zero, and that was actually the reason, that's the reason why using this as a weight provides a much better alternative. Okay, in fact, um, this is true even if I take this factor here to a, a large power like what we have here t over 2 because polynomials go to uh, uh, 0 much slower than e to the minus uh, something very large, right? This beats all polynomials. So let us see uh, how well this uh, algorithm performs. Hmm. Okay, so which one is? Uh, okay, so let us first. We had these uh, three cases, right? <coughs> we had uh, a case of randomly chosen variable uh, variances, so that's case one. And let's see how well we do. Okay, so if you go down, everything converges extremely fast and notice uh, did I run this okay this looks let me rerun it uh, let me quit the kernel and uh, yeah mathematica's kernel gets uh, gets corrupted very easily so uh, you never rerun the program without quitting the kernel first uh, and sometimes it's lazy to uh, why is it taking so much time here? It gets me worried. Okay, uh, terminated. Uh, okay, so let's see. Okay, so this this one is uh, right now. So these are the weights. The red one is golden gold standard, right? Uh, then. Uh, uh, the Loretti 
is uh, blue, and uh, the kerch of the affine is the, what's the name of this color? Okay, magenta. Magenta, that's right. <laughs> okay, so you can see that they all perform well, and especially uh, Loretti and uh, uh, UNSW is the last <laughs> one, so the green one is our, and you can see that they all do extremely good job in fact, if you go to the errors, uh, then you can see that uh, uh, the error of our, uh, actually reciprocal, no, actually ours is uh, the closest to the error of maximum likelihood estimation. Uh, affine is not equally precise, but it's still pretty good. So all three perform very well uh, when uh, the variances are chosen at random. Notice, again, I want to stress this, that the error of the best sensor is one. And these guys achieve uh, uh, one third of the error. So less accurate sensors, actually, if you take them all into account, uh, <coughs> They, uh, achieve, they produce substantially better estimate than the best sensor. <coughs> and uh, notice also that there are no outlier eliminations. As you will see, if there is an outlier, the system automatically assigns uh, low weight uh, to it. OK, so let's see what happens in uh, uh, this tricky case where reciprocal breaks down, namely when they are equally spaced variances. Um, okay, so we quit the kernel just to avoid that surprises. And let us see. Mathematica is not the fastest uh, when it comes to computations because it runs everything in a symbolic mode and tries to postpone numerical its instantiation for as long as, uh, as it possible and as a consequence uh, it, uh, uh, it runs uh, quite slow, orders of magnitude slower than the uh, than MATLAB. Okay, let's see what was the performance. <coughs> uh, the performance here is, as you can see, uh, the reciprocal collapsed totally because it slammed into the value of the best sensor. Right? Affine didn't do bad, 0 0.25, but uh, we did uh, uh, almost as good as the uh, um, theoretical optimum, namely the error of maximum likelihood. And the reason for that is, uh, if you look at the variances, that's really quite impressive, I have to say. Uh, despite Vladi Schrack breaking down the algorithm, uh, it actually has, uh, uh, in most of the cases, it has uh, amazingly good performance. So blue is the reciprocal. Everyone got weight zero except for the most accurate sensor. This guy, well, it's trying to keep up and it's not, but it's far from the optimal. And look, green is our algorithm and it almost perfectly hugs uh, the maximum likelihood. Uh, estimation. Okay, so this kind of collective decision making actually is effective in, in practice. <coughs> okay, now um, let us see the third case where Loretti crashes badly. I'm not Loretti, the, Ch the Kirchhoff crashes badly. Let me uh, choose case uh, three here. Remember, case three is uh, the one with a huge outlier, right? Let's see what happens when we run this one. Um, 
So, oops. Uh, let's see what happens on the bottom. Okay, let's look at the results first. Oh, it's still running. <laughs> yeah, this, uh, I didn't make an effort to uh, write uh, really uh, the fastest code, but one that uh, is the most readable. Uh, so, okay, let's see what we got here. Uh, as you can see, uh, a reciprocal got almost as close uh, as uh, um, maximum likelihood. And because the, but affine got totally messed up. And look at us, we actually got better than maximum likelihood because only expected <coughs> error is the smallest, but it, uh, this is of course not guaranteed that the error will be always smallest. And so we produced uh, an extremely accurate estimate. And the reason why this happened with the, uh, the affine, look what happened. So what happened is uh, that uh, everyone rejected, uh, let me go back to full screen. Everyone successfully rejected the outlier because notice 25th sensor, everyone gave it uh, zero weight. Uh, and both, uh, both the reciprocal and our algorithm almost perfectly follow the maximum likelihood, but uh, Loretti essentially found the mean of everyone except the offending sensor, right? So in all three cases, we perform uh, much better. So now, but this is not, these three cases are not what should only interest us. So let us see how this is, so what are the requirements of, of a good aggregation system? Good aggregation system, has to provide theoretically optimal, close to theoretically optimal estimator when the errors of the sensors are stochastic. So it should be well behaved for stochastic errors producing uh, minimal possible variance. So you can see here we produce variance of the max likelihood which is theoretically the best possible by something called Kramer or Pound, of which you have a proof actually in the notes. Uh, if you're a mathematician, you definitely want to look at that. Uh, um, secondly, though, that's only half of the thing. Secondly, it has to be robust against collusions. So if a bunch of people try to subvert, somehow it should detect them and reject them. So let's see how robust are these three algorithms against two types of malicious behavior, namely 